Here's five creative editing techniques. Let's dive right in. Okay, with this one, we're going to get into AI structure and push it the opposite way so that we have more blur in the image. We're also going to take the boost up as well. We're then going to get into the radio mask and clear an area so that it's back to the normal shot that was taken. Just move that into position and adjust it to whatever you need. Remember, these are not finished images. These are just for you to experiment with. Next, we're going to create a new stamped layer using the image we just did and then we're going to repeat the process which again will increase the blur. Boost it again, probably not as much this time and use the radio mask. This time make the radio mask just slightly bigger and that should give you your effect that you are after for this just to around about there. Next thing, you'll see that we have new and 4.1 image opacity is back. So there's the before and there's the after. It's just created more blur. Depth of field if you want to call it that, but more blur in your image. This is the natural sky that came with us, but for this example, I'm going to change the sky. I'm going to load one of my own skies in here, and we're going to show you the new sliders within the sky replacement, which are here, atmospheric haze and sky temperature. These will help you blend your skies into the scenes more naturally. And you can see the effect that they have. You can pull any of these sliders, the exposure, relight the scene to get an image that's finished to what you want that looks more natural. The sun never sets at that angle for this image, so there's the before and after. For this here, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the advanced. I'm going to work with the blue dress here and I'm just going to show you how to change an image. You change the colours to whatever you want. This for me is an easier way to work when I can see the green here. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to use the brush to paint back in the green. The hardness of the brush I'm going to take down. So the softness I've taken down there so that I can paint that in. The next bit of the process is the time consuming part of the process and this will take longer depending on what it is you want to colour in here, and what you want to recolour. So I'm going to speed this up for you. And there we have it. That's the dress now recolored. I'm just going to change the hue to let you see the colors that you can pan through when you're doing this. You can use the sliders to change any of the hue. I'll also go in to a before and after setting, change the saturation here as well. How much color we're wanting through. Here's the before and after. And again, I'll cycle through the different colors to let you see it changing. So here's the hue shift change. This can be used for eyes, hair, anything at all. Recolor anything within your scene. This method here can be used to soften and smooth out any surface. I'm just going to show you this example using the long exposure in the water here. So it's AI structure, push it in the opposite direction, boost it slightly, Use your brush to paint in what you want to keep. Take the hardness of the brush down. Just because I've got straight edges here, I'm using the hardness of the brush. If you were doing this in glass, to smooth out glass, to get rid of reflections on glass, or something like that, you'd probably use a soft edge brush. Check the mask, see what I've painted. 
boost some of the details just to bring a little bit back through. Last but not least for these, double exposure. Add a new image layer. Already selected, so I'm going to go with final image. And you can see the new image opacity here. I'm going to turn that down slightly and get into layer transform and resize this layer. You pull it into where I'm, around, where I'm happiest with it, where I want the effects to, to lie within this image once it's blended. Once I'm happy with the positioning of it, I'm going to lock the aspect ratio just there. Click done. The next thing is the blending. For this, I'm going to use overlay. Remember, you can jump back in between your layers, so that didn't show up too well, so I'm going to convert it to black and white. Get back up to my layers panel. There you have it. So there's the double exposure there, but we're not finished yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blend out some of the hard edges just around here using a big brush for the blend. That I'm happier with. Next thing. I'm going to again and create a stamped layer. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can add a background to this as well. And the new stamped layer, go down to AI Sky Replacement, select a sky. I've got one selected already. Sky Comp. And there it is dropped in. And you can see it's not actually a sky, it's a scene. So now I'm going to get back into the new atmospheric haze. Adjust the sky temperature to match it all together. Turn the exposure down slightly. Relight the scene. And there we have it. Hopefully all that made sense and hopefully you can try that with your own images. That was no way intended to be the final image. The, the examples I showed you, it was just to let you see what you can do. Sometimes it's good to think outside the box and take the sliders in the opposite direction. The surface blur is brilliant for removing reflections or lessening reflections in glass. So that's one that's worth giving a try. As well as that, we've got image opacity slider back now in Luminar 4.1. So look around the new software, see what's new, go into the blog on the website, it'll also tell you there what's new, and have fun. Big thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. If you want to check out some more, have a look below at the rest of the videos and please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching.